Today we are planting peppers in our garden, but it's not just any particular one type of pepper that we're planting. We're actually planting several pe peppers because we are making a Scoville scale pepper garden. If you're not familiar with the Scoville scale, that is the measurement to know how spicy a pepper might be. That's the ranking system, our Scoville units. And so we've got peppers laid out here um, to kind of highlight that Scoville scale. Now the Scoville scale was actually developed by a pharmacist named Wilbur Scoville in 1912. And the way they identify how many Scoville units each pepper has is by extracting the capsaicinoids out of the pepper. And they do that by taking a dried weight amount of the pepper, a specific amount of weight, um, and then putting that in alcohol. And then they're able to extract those capsaicinoids. Now the primary component of those capsaicinoids that gives the pepper its heat is capsaicin. You might have heard of that word before. So a lot of capsaicin is taken out of that and eventually through that extraction process they then have that heat um, which is then dissolved into sugar water. So you have a taste test panel and this taste test panel is then given a diluted solution of that um, that extracted heat components. And so as they taste test, basically the concentration of those capsaicinoids gets lower and lower until they can't identify any heat in that solution anymore by simply tasting it. Now the heat of a pepper is not only determined by the genetics, obviously we know a jalapeno is more hot than a bell pepper, but it's also determined by the environment in which it's been grown. So for example, a lot of times, we see ranges of Scoville units on our peppers. And that's not only because it's a subjective test, right? Something that might taste hot to you might taste less hot to me because we have different um, sensory organs. However, a pepper, a jalapeno pepper that's grown under stressed environments with reduced water, reduced fertility, um, it actually will be hotter than a jalapeno that's grown under optimal environmental conditions. So for a jalapeno, typically that range is 2,500 Scoville units, anywhere up to 8,000 Scoville units. So that's why you see a range of heat a lot of times on different peppers. Now genetics can also play into that. Like I said, a jalapeno is always going to be hotter than a bell. However, there are some jalapenos that are no heat jalapenos. So this particular one I have next to me is called fooled you. And it is a cultivar of a jalapeno. So it is a true jalapeno. However, through traditional breeding practices, that capsaicinoids have actually been bred out of the pepper. So it has a Scoville ranking of zero. So while it genetically is a jalapeno, it has been bred out of it. Um, so that allows you to still enjoy your jalapeno poppers without concern of really truly how hot that jalapeno might be. There also are no heat ha habaneros as well that you might wanna try. So getting back to our garden here, we've got several peppers laid out as you can see. Again, so we've got one bed that's gonna be more sweet to mild, and then we've got a bed that's gonna be a little hotter and go from mild to hot. So the first three we've got here actually have zero Scoville units on them, meaning that they have no heat at all. Of course, we've got our Fulju jalapeno, followed by our sweet um, banana pepper that a lot of times comes with salads. And then finally, our bell pepper, when we've got a big Bertha bell that we're planting here in our garden. So these first three have zero Scoville units and they're not gonna pack any heat to them when you bite into them. Following that up, we've got our pimento sweet pepper and our pepperoncini. Both of these have a rating of 100 to 500 Scoville units. Then next, we've got an Anaheim that's gonna be 500 to 1,000 units followed by our poblano, which is 1,000 to 2,000 Scoville units. And then finishing off our bed here, we've got a traditional jalapeno that again comes in around 2,500 to 8,000 Scoville units. Now, as we skip over to our hot pepper bed over here, we're gonna start with a serrano pepper. And our particular um, cultivar that we have is called Flaming Jade. And it's around 3,000 Scoville units. 
So again, keep in mind what I said about environment. Sometimes, if you notice that 3000 level is in that same range as a traditional jalapeno. So it might be at times you've had a jalapeno that's tasted hotter than a serrano, and sometimes a serrano has, might have tasted hotter than a jalapeno. And that's a lot of times because of that environmental factor. Following our serrano pepper, we've got a Hungarian yellow pepper, and we're going to bump up the heat on this one to 5,000 to 10,000 Scoville units. After that, we've got a Tabasco pepper, and that's often used in hot sauces because it's got a rating of 30,000 to 50,000 Scoville units. Um, 50,000 is also typically where we rate the cayenne pepper, so a lot of times we hear those in hot sauces as well followed by a traditional habanero pepper. And that's definitely going to be on the hotter side. However, it has a much larger range from 100,000 to 350,000 Scoville units. So we're getting much hotter compared to zero units at all. Now, before we get to our three hottest peppers that we have here on our Scoville pepper garden, I want to take a look at the, the genus species of all of the peppers that we've discussed so far, going back to that genetics aspect of it. So all peppers are in the genus capsicum, okay? And so actually capsicum got its Greek, it's come from the Greek word kaptos, which means to capture or to bite. So you truly can say as a pepper has more capsaicin in it, it's definitely going to have more bite that it offers to your tongue as you try it. Now, the, most of the ones that we've talked about at this point are capsicum annuum, with the exception of the Tabasco pepper, which is actually capsicum frutescence. And then, as we just mentioned, the habanero is a different one called capsicum chinense. Now, you'll notice in our top three, they are also all capsicum chinense. This particular species has resulted in a lot of breeding trying to get even hotter peppers. So that's the one that really is getting a lot of attention right now. Now the name might make you think that it is from China, but actually all peppers are native to the New World. So you'll find them in Central and South America. So our top three spiciest peppers are all of that species chinense. And we start that off with the ghost pepper. In 2007, it was recognized by the world, Guinness World Record holders as being the hottest pepper with around a million Scoville units. Quickly, it was surpassed in 2011 by the Trinidad Scorpion, which comes in around 1.2 to 2 million Scoville units. Currently, that has even been surpassed, and our hottest pepper that we now have is called the Carolina Reaper that tops the scale around 2.2 million Scoville units. Now, the Carolina Reaper is said to actually have a little bit of a fruity sweet flavor initially when you bite into it, and that's probably prior to it melting your face off, so I think I'm just going to take their word for it on that. As you can see, however, there is a wide range of peppers to try. In fact, all of these peppers we just got at a local garden center, so they're not anything that you have to special order if you're curious about trying um, your own Scoville units or taste testing and seeing how hot you can handle those. However, I think for my particular palate, somewhere in this bed, about midway, it went from edible to ornamental. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.